live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Talking About Survivor. I am Christiana Ellis. And I'm Mike Mateen. And tonight, we are here to talk about Survivor Island of the Idols, Episode 7, which featured some su surprising things, or at least one big one towards the end, which, yeah. I mean... We'll talk about, I mean, like, ultimately, how much actual impact it had is maybe less. I mean, you know, obviously an idol out of play, but. Well, it was out of play either way. Yeah. Well, I guess well, I just the other mean. one, too, I guess, yeah. Yeah, I guess I, I, you know, we'll talk about it, but it was definitely just a, like, I, I did not expect him to play it that way. For Dean or for Jamal? Jamal to play his idol for Nora. Yes, I did not expect that either. Um, I honestly thought he was going to go home at that point. Hmm. But it makes sense that they didn't target him specifically in case he had an idol. Or because well, they, also, they also wanted... Um, there was, they had, I think they had enough reasoning that they wanted Jack gone too. So. Right. I mean, we heard Kelly basically planning on how she was considering between those two. So it was kind of just lucky <laughs> that it wasn't him because it could have been. Uh, certainly, yeah. I, d I don't think that him having an idol was one of the possibilities that Kelly was really considering or planning for. That's true because he didn't get it from the island of the idols. He found some right. He, uh, he found yeah. it at the you know at the camp around the right. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but in any event, that was kind of a uh, 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 an exciting little tangent right there at the end, which was like, oh, okay, now I'm not sure what's going to happen. Uh, but uh, Anyway, let's uh, let's let's jump back to the beginning of the episode. I think we had some like some s solid play in this episode. I thought, compared especially yeah. compared to uh, some of the episodes this season, have been a little more hit and miss. Um, but we we started off with um, you know everyone coming back to camp after the Jason vote, and so we had uh, Elaine pretty matter of fact about like, you know, recognizing and accepting that there are people upset who have some reason to be, and yet not regretting her decision because that was the situation the game put her in. She had to, had to be done. You know, that was what she had to do. What was right for her game. Yep. Um, meanwhile, Lauren feels very betrayed by Missy, which makes sense. We were thinking last time that it, it seemed a little bit like Aaron was shouldering most of the blame, but maybe that's not necessarily the case, or at least not for Lauren and Missy. But how interesting I thought that Missy at least managed to de-escalate the situation, if not resolve it, by pointing out, like, I'm making sure that only guys go home, you don't have to worry. I'm protecting you, even if I don't always tell you everything. Which, if I were Lauren, I would not be super reassured by, but I suppose it's better than thinking you're next. Right. You know, it would be a little bit more like, hey, if you're really watching my back, maybe tell me what you're planning to do. Right. You know, if we're actually on the same side, maybe you could let me know instead of pretending that, you know, it's like, oh, it was, you know, I left you out of the loop for your own good for some reason. Right. But, but uh, as a method of trying to run a little damage control on what was perceived initially as just a total betrayal... I, you know, I'm I'm not sure I can think of something that would have worked better. You know, she's feeling profoundly betrayed, and then it's just kind of left with a slightly frustrated awkwardness instead of like, how could you? You betrayed me. I I hate you now. You know what I mean? Right. Um, 
whether or not it's true is an interesting question, right? Because Missy hasn't mentioned the All Girls Alliance to like the camera in a while. So how much of that was really just just telling, you know, Lauren something that would calm her down? Yeah, I mean, she. Well, I guess you're right. This is this I was saying she didn't say it to the camera. She said it to Lauren to the camera, mm. not. Yeah. So this was the first time we've heard in a while, but she right. did. So it was odd because, yeah, I think that you brought it up because she did feel it felt very genuine. Mm. Um, like it was still something that she was considering. Um, Cause doesn't she point out, I believe it's at this point, how since the tribe swap, they have not lost a girl. Yeah. Which is either very clever spin, you know, or she is actually paying attention mm -hmm. to whether or not an all girls alliance is still potential. And if, as long as they don't lose girls, then, that makes sense, right. um, you know. And I, I know, like, I don't, I don't want to talk too much about it from tribal council later. But I mm -hmm. did really love the book ending. Uh, so this was actually, uh, you know, I wanted to give the the reason I'm talking about it now is I wanted you know, we've we've sort of talked about the the off pace editing. Mm -hmm. I thought this was pretty solid editing. Yeah. You know, while subtle, you know, you have the conversation about the all girls alliance here between her and then Nora starts really riling it up again. Mm -hmm. And then you have it close out at the end where, you know, Kelly and um, somebody else, I think, uh, was defending her as well. Maybe it's not Elaine. Um, well, Janet. Yeah, I mean, Janet definitely jo joined into that conversation. Um, but it was primarily Kelly that, that sort of shut that down and said, like, why, you know, why, no, why does no, you know, how, how, talking about how it's like almost sexist to even think that why do the girls just automatically like are the ones that have to get together? Why can't we just get together with whoever we want to, you know? Yeah. And I yeah. thought that was a cool ending to it, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, we'll definitely talk more about that when we get there because that's, that's an interesting conversation that I'm was glad happened even that, even though like I had some slightly mixed feelings about, the specific details of like, it's, it's one thing, like I, I agree with all of the points in abstract, but I think there's some nuances about what's actually happening on this season of survivor right now that are not being taken into account in this discussion about the abstract of stereotypes and so on. Right. Um, I mean, yeah. That's why I said, I want to talk about that later, but I wanted to, the reason I brought it up now is that I, I felt like it gave, it was a successful bookend edit yeah. of the conversation with two very different perspectives on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so in the meantime, though, uh, we have the, this new majority uh, very happy with their control, including Aaron talking to the camera as though somehow this is a great success for him um, as opposed to something that only happened because Elaine, <laughs> you know, got that advantage. Right. You know, I mean, he's allowed to be happy uh, with his like the decision he made, but you know, uh, I I don't know how much could you know he his big contribution to that was deciding not to switch after all. Right. So anyway, um, meanwhile uh, at the other camp, everyone's you know wet. It's a rainy night. Uh, which kind of sets up everyone kind of really getting on each other's nerves the next morning. Uh, Jamal's trying to start a fire, but he's having kind of some trouble and he gets a little defensive uh, or maybe a lot defensive about it when Kelly tries to help. And, you know, like, yeah, I mean, I think it read to me very much like a, yeah, everyone's, Nerves are on edge because they didn't sleep well and they're cold and they want, they're impatient for the fire. And <laughs> because, you know, we've seen the, uh, Jamal and Kelly getting along previously. So it doesn't seem like it's some long standing thing so much as Nora tries to make it seem like later. Right. Uh, well, I think he was also without being explicit kind of tying into like the the conversation 
the public conversation that he and Jack had the day before. Yeah. You know, like, cause he was, you know, when he was defensive there, you know, while we obviously know why and he and mm-hmm. Jack resolve it, it's, you can see, you can see how she would be referencing that by saying Jamal is always acting like this mm-hmm. without, but also knowing better than to be like, yeah, he was just doing this yesterday to Jack getting all fired yeah. up. Cause Jack made this awful joke. Like, she seems at least aware enough to not bring that, make that explicit. Right. But Nora, you know, as we've discussed, seems to lack, you know, the self-awareness that would let me give her position on this more credit. Right. <clears throat> well, I'm not giving her credit. Yeah. I'm saying like, uh, to, the reason that she's describing it that way is that in the last four days in their perspective, you know, Jamal has had you know, defensive sort of spout offs with both her and Jack, Mm -hmm. you know, so she's clearly being, you know, uh, I'll say hyperbolic on how bad Jamal is, you know, uh, but right. And is to be hyperbolic. Well, and it's one thing for her to be so offended that he would suggest she took too much Except that's kind of not what he actually said. I mean, that's... Right. But, the only point was that there was... She know, was complaining that it seemed like less rice than she was expecting. And he said that's because you have it in a great big bowl. Right. He and didn't she, say yeah, you took you too much. Big, right. Yeah. She took that to mean, oh, you have a great big bowl of rice, you greedy, you know... Right. Whatever. You know, and that that's how she heard it, which mm-hmm. is not what he said. Yeah. Well, it's also possible that he didn't not mean that. You know what I mean? It's like if he sees her having rice in a great big bowl and he didn't see her serve herself, he might reasonably assume that she took more because she's filling this big bowl instead of one of the smaller ones, right? And even if yeah. that's not what happened. You know, it, it's, it's again, it's just that sort of thing. Like, he didn't actually accuse her of anything. She was complaining, and he was defensive about her complaint because her complaint indirectly was about suggesting somehow he did the rice wrong. Right. I mean... Yeah, made it wrong to, like, make it less of rice. It was well, weird. Yeah, it sounded like maybe just there was a question of there was either more or less water in it. Like, maybe it was not cooked as long so the rice grains weren't swollen as much and so it was less volume or something i who knows what it was all about but the point was that she took great offense at something he didn't quite actually say that was in response to her complaining in the first place right yeah so i don't know i just we, I mean, we see in this sequence him being a little bit prickly, right? Just in terms of like defensive about having a hard time starting the fire and like, you know, like that looks like everybody just rubbed raw because the, you know, they had a crappy night, which makes sense. But her trying to elaborate that and make it a bigger thing partially corroborated by Kelly. I mean, she does sort of suggest like that he sometimes acts like that, but, and I think we could believe that, but nonetheless, Nora is certainly as established on the season so far, someone whose perspective has to be taken with a grain of salt. Right. Um, in the meantime, though, she, you know, as you mentioned, she approaches Janet and Karishma wanting to talk about this girl's alliance, but, uh, you know, it's interesting that uh, Janet talked about Tom being a straight shooter. I, you know, I'm continuing to be more and more impressed with Janet. She had a great episode, right? But yeah, I, I liked, know. I liked how matter of fact she was to Nora about like, no, it's too soon to do that. I mean, you know, I, I see your point about like, okay, sure, maybe he's gonna be a threat, but if we're doing that, why not just do Dean like we've been talking about? Right. You know, so you're, 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 you're kind of suggesting making a move that doesn't seem like it <laughs> really. Right. It almost like you just want to 
do something. You just want to be antagonistic to the plan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're just trying to come up with something different. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so in the meantime, though, um, Janet, we're, we're set up with Janet talking about having to kind of manage Nora a little bit. It's like she, she tends to spin off in these other directions and we kind of need to keep her in the right headspace so she doesn't disrupt what we're trying to do only to then have the boat show up and say it's Janet's turn to go to the island of the idols, which, you know, it's interesting because of course it, it was a little surprising how emotional she got going in. Even just like she, she seemed like, you know, she said, I was scared. I'm scared, but like, not in a physical danger way, but I think she had just, you know, internalized this idea that it's, it's bad to go to this place because it makes people pay attention to you. And she's been kind of trying to run a low key game. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, in any event though, very cool on Island of the Idols there where she's, as they say, the first to really kind of say, Okay, I'm going to listen to the offer you're making. I'm going to think about it. And I'm going to decide not to do that because that seems like it's actually not that valuable. And I frankly, I think in this circumstance, that was a hundred percent the right call. Like, oh, yeah. you know, it's one thing to say, oh, well, you know, Elaine jumped on it without even hearing the thing, but like that arrangement of like, you know, try to grab this little thing during a chaotic challenge and then you have an actual significant benefit just when you need it versus the idea of okay you can avoid being voted out at the cost of your own vote and being present in the tribal council in a way that's very dramatically calls attention to you and that's the good outcome right that doesn't seem like a very positive <laughs> Yeah, and the only time that that is actually helpful to you is if you are, like, guaranteed to be the vote. Right. And it doesn't matter that you remove yourself because you're already the vote. You're just getting yourself out of the situation. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that, ha that has to be that specific of a scenario. Right. That you're 100% convinced it's you. Right. And, you know, in fairness to some of the others that have jumped at it right away, this one was also framed in the specific context of, this lesson is about calculated risks and thinking two or three moves ahead and thinking out the consequences of the decisions you make. So they primed her for doing that. But nonetheless, yeah. she made what I think is clearly the right call. And they agreed, but it was also a little bit of a weird result for her to essentially win the lesson, which means that she goes home with nothing. Right. And I thought that was odd that there wasn't like a, you know, there wasn't a follow up offer like that, like the last mm -hmm. time where someone demurred. Um, it, you know, th it was a little awkward. I mean, I liked, I liked her response. I liked that they supported her. I liked mm -hmm. all that. But there was just like this weird off of, like you said, like every, they're celebrating how well she did, how she did better than everybody else, but she's leaving with no benefit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, the whole thing is framed as like no risk, no reward, which makes sense. And her decision was the smart one to not take that risk. So I guess it makes sense that there's no reward. And at the very least they gave her, it's gotta be a confidence booster to have Robin Sandra say, Hey, good job. That was the right answer. You did it. You've got this lesson down. Like that's, that's nice to hear for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, also, uh, very fun was, uh, her coming back on the boat and them saying, show us the idol. And she flashes her boobs. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty funny. Um, just like, and there's even a couple of layers to it, obviously, because like, there's just sort of the, uh, the, uh, exuberance of the moment but also just like there's an element of like well i gotta show you that i don't have an idol right mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so that was a lot of fun i i like janet um 
Yeah. So it was, it was an interesting lesson though, just because the thing that you could theoretically win really wasn't that good compared to what we've seen in the last couple of these. Well, I feel like that was on purpose to kind of tee somebody up to actually make this decision. Right. So that, that, you know, you could have this outcome with the right player and, and, mm -hmm. and it kind of worked out for them that they had a very deliberate player, right. you know, who got through it. But I, I feel like it was purposely meant to be less of a reward to encourage this. You know? Yeah. It occurs to me that we didn't even really learn what the game was, right? She was going to play some sort of a game to either win or not. And she decided not to play the game, but we didn't really, I mean, we saw him holding some sort of like colored little wooden tokens of some sort. It might've just been a sort of a, you know, find the P sort of game, right? You know, like which we're find the orange token under these three coconut shells or something. Who knows what it was, but I don't think we really even learned. Right. Didn't know. Yeah. Um, not important ultimately. Um, but it, it, I think despite it being an interesting outcome from the lesson perspective, I think it did make it kind of anticlimactic. Uh -huh. Tuckered that guy out. Oh, sweet puppy. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I know, so, so, uh, we, we cut next to a nighttime shot of the, camp the shelter at the other camp where we have uh dan getting a, a little handsy <laughs> in the shelter not not aggressively and like you know he's saying like is this okay you know he's just sort of very touchy feely as has come up before in the season that's what i was gonna say didn't didn't he have an issue with this already once like i remember yeah. I trying to look back but i yeah, um, I believe so. I think that was like episode two or something like that. Yeah, I just, I mean, it was actually in episode one. Okay. It was Kelly and Molly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that I, was one of our first exposures to Kelly that we actually, where we got a, a really good read on her because she was very mm -hmm. direct but not uh, accusational to him. Yeah. She handled herself really well in the, hey, like, I know you're not meaning anything by this, but let me just tell you what's going on. And he and he said, oh, yeah, no, I, I get it. Like, I'm from Hollywood, and this is what we do or whatever. He was kind, he was kind of weird, but he stopped doing it for a while. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting that there's been a little bit of a theme this season on having people have the sort of ordinary different kinds of people – forced to live together sorts of issues, but with the, the show choosing to show us talking through the resolution of that, right? It's, it's happened several times now with this sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a little interesting. Again, probably new editors, but also, yeah. I, you know, I think they're also showing us, some particularly well handled, difficult conversations, yeah. which I think they are interesting and I'm glad they have showed them to us, you know? Yeah, me too. But in any event, so, you know, it's, it's not so extreme in this particular instance that like, you know, he didn't, you know, she didn't tell him, no, don't do that. There was, it didn't even come to that. It was more just a little bit like, all right, I'd probably rather not, but it's more work. Emo more emotional labor to tell you no and have to deal with that than to just say, okay, fine, which is not great, but you know, it's also like at a certain point you have to be your own advocate in that sort of situation, right? Like if it's really not okay, you should say so. Right. Well, the way I kind of took this is, you know, he's, he's obviously like that's sort of his default and he doesn't mean yeah. anything. By it. And I think they've kind of, as they've grown to know him a little bit more, it's they're they're probably a little bit more tolerant, mm -hmm. even if they still don't like it. Um, I also felt like the reason they showed it though is to just keep, you know, throw a few pre. Oh well, here are some people that people are having problems with and could mm -hmm. be potential 
you know, like I, I feel like they're, they're not exactly red herrings, you know, but it's just kind of well, it's it's let's, let's show some yeah. potential. Like let's not just run the whole episode as hey, it's gonna be it's gonna come down to whether or not they just want to get rid of Dean or not, right. because you know, so you just throw a few of these in here, and it's like oh, they're having problems with Jamal. Oh, they're having problems with Dan over here. Oh, Nora's trying to do anything she can that's weird you yeah. know well honestly so. i i thought it was all really well handled from that perspective you know we've talked a little bit about the editing feeling yep. weird this season but this this um this episode felt good in that regard just in the sense that there were a lot of different little subplots happening and they all kind of went somewhere and left us with a, a lot of unknowns at the very end Yep. Um, but like in a interesting mystery way, like not in a, where the hell did that come from way, but more just like a, Oh gosh, I'm not sure which, how people are going to decide, but I understand what the various motivations in play are as opposed to something coming completely out of nowhere. Right. Yeah. So, uh, we have him being a little handsy, uh, the girls kind of discussing it in the morning and then Lauren and Tommy knowing that you know, with, uh, with Jason gone, the three of them are kind of in a tight spot. So they're thinking, everybody is thinking it's going to be the merge next time. Um, we see in the preview for next time that they're right, but I don't know if they are just guessing or not. Uh, yeah. But in any event, they're sort of just feeling like, let's just make sure it's not, one of us. So, you know, we're going to make sure it's Dan and they're kind of making preparations to throw Dan under the bus. Um, of course, Missy sees right through it. Um, well, it was fairly transparent. Yeah, it was fair. not. Yeah. Well, right. Yeah. It was, uh, ultimately it's kind of a, the obvious play. Like it's exactly what you would expect them to do in that situation, especially since she had previously observed that Lauren and Tommy were close. So to have the, the two of them come over together and say, gosh, you know, we don't know if you've noticed this, but Dan's kind of sneaky, right? And it's like, yeah, he's not the only one. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think it's interesting that you know, in the context with her conversation with Lauren earlier to have Missy talk about like, okay, well, we, we see what they're doing and it, the idea of we want to keep Lauren. So we have numbers for girls and I think I can work with her but I need to get rid of Tommy so she doesn't have some other alliance that right. she can go to. Yeah, I thought Missy, this this little moment here was one of my favorite moments with her so mm -hmm. far. Um, you know, she's obviously been a pretty pretty good player and has made a few things happen and, and seems to be really astute. Uh, this was really culminated it. Now, mm -hmm. Yes, they were kind of transparent, but for her to just straight up identify that and say, mm -hmm. okay, well, that that just solidifies in my mind that this is what we need to do. And I feel like she, well, she would have been able to make that happen. I think had they lost, it would have been Tommy. Or, well, I guess that would have been interesting too because he also has an idol, doesn't he? Uh, gosh, I can't remember now. Um Somebody else has a, a. There's another random one like hidden that someone's not talking about. I remember. Yeah. But, um. Sorry, I didn't mean to kind of derail. No, that's that, all right. Now I'm just curious because we knew Jamal had one. Let's see. Um. Let's see. Jamal found his in episode four. Um. Chelsea found one in episode two. That's right. That's who it was. Yeah, I don't think Tommy has one. That I was thinking of Chelsea. I know mm -hmm. it seemed odd that I would Not, have mistaken I, them. I get it. It's it's, so, it's they blur together sometimes. Uh, the episodes that is. 
-hmm. not necessarily Chelsea versus Tommy, but yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, but I, yeah, I, I agree that I think that Missy is, uh, I, I mean this in a positive context, but she's thinking like a mob boss, right? She, she's like, I need to make sure that she stays loyal to me because she doesn't have anywhere else to go. Like, I need it to not be a matter of does she trust me or not. I need her to not have another option. Yep. And I, th I thought that was cool. It's strategic thinking. Um, so let's see that that brings us to the immunity challenge. Um, yep. where I, I thought I hadn't really considered it, but it was an interesting little nuance that the coconuts varied in size and weight just because it added a tiny little strategic element of, uh, you know, uh, the lighter ones are going to be easier to throw, but they won't weigh down the basket as, as much. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's not a big deal, but uh, it did just, yeah, yeah, you know, just kind of a question of like, okay, if you're going up, do you try to go for one of the bigger ones or one of the smaller ones? Um, in any event, they're pretty close still. You know, it's it, Vokai, you know, is, is first to finish with that, but not by a whole lot. It's, you know, it's still pretty close. And, you know, then we have the puzzle there's a little bit of a chaotic moment where we see, uh, you know, Lauren is, is doing the puzzle calling for Vokai and doing pretty well, except that there was that whole moment where Elaine kept trying to say, it's not right. It's not right. It, this part right here isn't correct. We need to, and you know, but meanwhile, everyone else is already calling Jeff to come over. Right. And, and of course, you know, they still managed to get it fixed in time, but boy, it was so close at that point. Yeah, if Jamal had just been able to get that final piece, which I know is the trickiest one because yeah. it has to go in perfect, especially when it's a centerpiece like that. Mm -hmm. But if he was able to kind of get that incorrectly, they would have won. Like they had yeah. the puzzle essentially solved first. Mm -hmm. They just couldn't get those last yeah. just because of how they worked it to the center. They just became more comp more difficult. It, it, it went in yeah. crooked and it was just so heavy. It wasn't easy to just lift it up and then set it back in straight. Right. And it's, when it's that dead center piece, you can't like just kind of like slide it in like right. you can on the sides. Like you have to literally drop it straight down in. And that just exactly. Tricky. And, and because they were heavy. Yeah, that was, that was yeah. tricky, but it was so close. Uh, yeah. It was pretty an, an exciting finish, even though, you know, that's, that's exactly why they do these sorts of uh, puzzles. But this one was especially close. Yes. Um, and uh, so Vokai wins again. Uh, and here's, I was glad we had the reminder from Kelly that the idol she got from Island of the Idols is only good for one more tribal council. And it was an interesting nuance that I hadn't really considered that it wasn't that it's good for the next three abstract tribal councils. It's the next three she goes to. So theoretically, if her tribe keeps winning and she doesn't have to go to tribal council, it lasts longer. I thought that was interesting. I hadn't really thought about that. I hadn't either, and I, but I really liked it because it's, you know, it, it means that it stays in play longer. Like if they had won three in a row, the idol would have just disappeared and it would have been like, well, that sucks. Mm -hmm. You know, that was sort of anticlimactic. Right. But the fact that like she's allowed to hang on to it until a couple of times where she could use it, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that was cool, you know? Yeah. So, uh, what do you think about Kelly's plan? I have mixed feelings. Um, I settled on liking it. Mm -hmm. Now, it looks, at least from a one-line edit, from the which I know is hard to make judgments on, from the next time's thing, mm -hmm. it doesn't look like it's going to play out the way that both I and I think Kelly thought this was. Mm -hmm. The reason I liked it is um, Dean is so Dean is a, a threat again abstractly because he's likable mm 
Mm -hmm. But he's also someone who's very easy to pin as a threat. Yeah. So there's not a huge incentive to get rid of him here, except mm -hmm. that it makes the vote easy. And that's what, and no one wants to say that, but that's really what it's come down to is like, why stir the boat when we're going to go to the merge next time? Let's just get rid of the guy that's easiest. He is a threat. Like it's not, mm -hmm. he's not a bad vote. You know, it's not bad to vote him out. But she's looking at him saying, you know what? If it becomes untenable, like he's easy to get people to pin on. And if I do this for him when he is desperate, then he does owe me a favor, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, and I buy a little bit. I get to get rid of a different threat who's maybe a little bit more subtle and also has more alliance than Dean does, you know, like a Jamal or a Jack, you know, somebody who can connect back to the other tribe and maybe doesn't going to work with them like they think they are. Mm -hmm. um, and have Dean as, you know, almost, almost what Missy was thinking, but a little less overt. Yeah. Um, so I thought it was worth it because I, I don't see a loss in this. Especially the way that she played it, she did it so well that no one knows it was her unless yeah. Dean tells anybody and Dean's not going to say anything yet. Mm -hmm. um, but we do get the line in the scenes from next time of Dean sitting in a confessional and saying, I think it's time to get rid of Kelly. Mm. And which of course is always the thing. Like Dean is also a smart player. Yeah. You know, he's been kind of dealt a bad hand here, but he knows what to do. And if Kelly becomes the vote, like he's not going to just blindly defend her if he's unable to do it. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and so I think that's probably where that comes is, is either, you know, he's making some sort of offhand joke that doesn't, that they just lift it out of context mm -hmm. or, you know, like he was like, oh, you know, like Kelly gave me that idol and I'm so thankful. And, uh, but you know, it's Survivor, so maybe it's time to get rid of Kelly. Yeah. And it means nothing. Or the tide starts to shift towards Kelly and he's like, well, I want to help Kelly out because she helped me, gave me the idol, but I just don't know how I can turn this tide. So maybe it's time to get rid of Kelly. Like mm -hmm. the line's going to have some context, but yeah. It doesn't seem to be working with Shep, but I, you know, but hindsight is twenty twenty. I think if you've got it, you want to do something, you want to have a move on your resume. Like if this plays out and you get to the end and you can say, Hey, and remember I had this idol that I earned and I was safe and I managed to get it in a way where none of you knew that it was my idol that disrupted this and knocked out Jack before we even got to the merge where he could go use his relationships. Mm -hmm. Like that was something I did. So I, I I, I'm fine with it. You know, I, I talk again, the theme of the episode is risk reward. Right. I think the risk to her versus the reward to her is not huge. I mean, I think even if Dean goes and tells everybody next time that that happened, well, but the sting is gone. By, by the time Dean's going to tell anybody, the sting of losing Jack is going to be gone and people are going to be less, you know, like if they found out at tribal council and they return back, like they're going to be angry and then they start plotting against Kelly. But if they find out two or three days later, it, it's, it's not as hard, you know? And so again, I don't think there's a ton of risk to her from it, you know? Yeah. Well, I was thinking of the risk a little bit differently because, um, Oh, of her getting voted out tonight. Well, not even necessarily that, but more a matter of like, a, there's a little, it, it's the whole thing smacks a little bit of, I just don't want to waste my idol. So I have to think of something to do with it. Right. There's a little bit of that in it. Right. Which is an understandable emotion that you have this cool thing. You don't want to have it be wasted, but it's also probably not something that Robin Sandra would advise, which is to say, come up with something to do with it just so that it's not wasted. Um, but to, she did have the additional element of like, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, the, uh, look up the Island of the Idols Wikipedia as well while I'm talking, cause I wanted to double check the votes, but I have it. Okay. I'm here. So we, we saw two yeah. votes for Jack. Was that, was that Kelly and Dean? What did Nora, who did Nora vote for? Uh, not Nora, no, Nora voted for Jack. Okay. And Kelly voted for Dean. It was really weird. I remember oh. that. 
I was going to bring that up later because we did. Yeah. Okay. Like, what? Okay. That changes it a little bit because I was unclear on that piece of the plan. Because what I was worried about was, first of all, this idea that she wants to save Dean. Yes, that makes sense. Understandable. She does not trust Dean enough to just take it as a given that he wouldn't stab her in the back immediately. Turns out he didn't do that, but she is already in a position that she does not trust him enough to just take that as a granted. Right. Um, so she's talking about wanting to have at least one other vote for right. someone. She discusses right? approaching Nora, but we never see it. Right. Um, so, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, so what she's saying she needs is there needs to be one other vote at least to counteract his if he votes for her. Right. And so the idea was to get Nora to do it, but my assumption was that she was going to also vote with whatever this plan was, but it sounds like this was all a way to try to pin it on Nora. Right? Because yeah. now it was Nora that was the other vote for Jack and not Kelly. And she can pretend that she didn't, she doesn't know what to do or doesn't know what, what happened. Yep. And so that, okay. I've, I've come around on it a little bit because I think part of my concern was that any part of your plan relies on Nora doing what she says she will. Right. And so I, yeah. in going with that, like I, this is something I was, again, I was going to talk about these always later, but now since we're kind of on it, like, that's also the conclusion I came to because it was kind of weird. Like, wait, Kelly voted for Dean, and it's like, oh, I get it because she wants to be able to say that she wasn't part of this plan. Like, yeah. she's giving herself some plausible deniability. Mm -hmm. um, but then I also wanted to give Nora some credit for not be, like you could like I thought if she knew, she would have been so awkward about it and would have tipped it, and she didn't. Well, she. She actually played it fairly. I mean, she was kind of weird in tribal council, but not to a point that like you understood what she was going to do. Like you didn't know that she knew what was about to happen. Here's the thing though. I don't know that Nora was told the whole plan because I, what Kelly describes as just the pitch might have been the entirety of what she told Nora, which is to just say, hey, Nora, I know everybody's agreed on Dean and we're definitely doing that. That's the real plan. But if he has an idol, we know he's been trying to vote you out. And so if he has an idol, he's probably going to cast his vote for you. And if there are no other votes for anyone else, that means you go home. So maybe just for safety, you should vote for someone else just in case. Dean's going to go home. We know it. But just in case he has an idol, you make sure someone else goes instead of you. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I'm starting to lean towards that is, is likely because of Jamal's decision. Mm -hmm. So this sounds like even actually better for Kelly. Like Kelly's starting to sound like kind of a superstar as we talk through yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm agreeing with you. I, I, I was skeptical as she was describing it. And I felt a little bit, like I said, that she was maybe just doing a plan, like making a move just because she had this extra piece. But I don't know. I mean, now that we've kind of talked through it, like the way it all played out was a little bit awkward. And you can kind of even see her in that tribal council being the one that is most resistant to all of the Kumbaya language partly because she's concerned it's going to disrupt her carefully orchestrated plan. Right. Um, well, and then it makes sense why Jamal, you know, cause whether Nora explicitly tells Jamal or not mm -hmm. that she's going to cast a different vote in case there's an idol and it's her, she probably yeah. expressed concern that 
once it was planted in her head that Dean might have an idol, mm -hmm. she probably said to Jamal, like, hey, like, I'm kind of like, what if Dean has an idol? Mm -hmm. You know, what, he, you know, and he only votes for me, like, that could be me. Like, I, I'm a little nervous about this. Mm -hmm. And so when Jamal is confronted with Dean actually having an idol, mm -hmm. he defaults to, well, Dean's probably voting for Nora because that's what Nora thinks he's going to do because mm -hmm. that's what Kelly told Nora he would do and 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 Kelly's whole you know plan comes to this fruition where she didn't have to use her she got to use her idol to do something a little different she mm -hmm. ostensibly has Dean owing her one mm -hmm. she doesn't vote for Dean plausible deniability she gets the other idol burned on Nora because mm -hmm. Nora is the one that's and Nora votes for Jack instead of her because Nora's nervous. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty well, yeah, executed. You know, yeah. No, I I agree. I'm like I'm coming around on it, and and I mean, obviously Dean could burn her, but why? Right? Dean has no incentive to burn her for a while. Yeah. Well, I he, mean, we'll see if he changes his mind about that. But right, he has a hundred percent incentive if if for some reason. Kelly starts to get floated as a potential target and maybe mm -hmm. he's still kind of a target. Like it a hundred percent. He can go and say, well, you know, the only reason I survived is because Kelly orchestrated this plan and mm -hmm. gave me an idol. And all of a sudden everybody goes, Whoa, Kelly, you yeah. know, and then off Dean onto Kelly. Right. So it does have that incentive, but it won't, it won't happen for a while. So, I mean, you know, and yeah. at that point, like from, again, from the risk reward, perspective like if you're really playing like playing that out if kelly is enough of a target that dean's willing to throw her under the bus there she's a target either way so whether yeah. dean does that or not isn't really that big of a deal like she's gonna have to work through it no matter what mm -hmm. so you know you play that the 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 odds that dean is not going to do that to you unless it's an right. extreme situation you well, know. especially since she's she's saving him specifically because she has like this, you know, it's an indirect connection with him, but that's that's real. You know, this this idea of we have a mutual friend, that sort of thing. Like that's yeah. you know, that could be enough. Um Yeah, and so I yeah, I think the more we've talked through it, my concerns about it have pretty much gone away. Because I think that you don't want to rely on Nora, but to an extent, she's, she, you know, like the, it's, Nora's still only a backup, right? Because she's still saying, I'm going to save Dean, and then whoever he votes for goes. And Nora's vote was only a backup. So even if she doesn't cooperate, she only needed that in case Dean also doesn't cooperate. And so if, as long as she feels like she has one or the other, it should be fine. But yeah, yeah so that's, that's pretty cool. Yep. Um, in the meantime, though, let's see, we have... Um, you know, uh, leading up to the Tribal Council, we have... Uh, Jamal feeling pretty confident. Uh, he thinks it's going to be a unanimous Dean vote. He does mention in general about how, like, he, you know, that Nora is a handful, but he's not making the emotional call of uh, voting her out just for that personality conflict if that's not really the strate right strategic move, which, you know, good for him. Mm hmm um, although I would, well, and, you know, I was, I was going to start to say that, you know, his decision to how to play his idol certainly startled me when he did it later. And I was starting to think that it's like, is that just like an emotional decision based on the, you know, the, the kumbaya feelings everybody has after that discussion. But I, what I realized is, uh, that he had to assume Dean got this idol on his own because no one would help him and he's only going to have one vote and he's going to vote for Nora. So if I make Nora immune also, that means all the votes are canceled and we'll just revote. Right. And we just get rid of Dean. Yeah. 
Yeah. Or, or, or at the very least we have time to figure out what to do next. Right. Yeah. Um, so I think that was what he was thinking with the, the idle play and, and there's a logic to that, right. You know, um, I don't know if I would have made the same decision just because I feel like keeping the idol myself would be of more value to me than keeping Nora. Right. Yeah. Because if the concern that is that Dean will still be there and Nora will go home, like, okay, maybe you prefer it to go the other way, but enough so that you give up your own idol for it. I, I don't think I would make that call, but. No, I, I feel like the same as you is that I, I feel like I would have made the call that I would have just played it on myself just in case. Yeah. You know, just when because I'm, it's like something's happening that I didn't expect. This is already not going the way I thought it would just to be safe. I just, I need to be safe. Yeah, yeah. I need to make it to the merge. After that, I can reevaluate whether if it's Nora that's gone or anybody else that's gone. I, I can, as long as I live another day, like I can figure it out. And, and so I agree with you. I see the logic behind what he did and it had been, you know, his confidence had gotten to such a point where he just thought it was definitely not him. Mm-hmm. It, and so I kind of applaud him for his confidence, not shaking on this. Yeah. You know, where he was still convinced it wasn't him, but it, that could also be dangerous later on. Well, I just feel like for all we know, it was a coin flip between him and Jack. So it very easily could have been him that go went home this time because yeah. he played his idol for Nora, who he doesn't even like. Which I distinctly thought was a possibility, you know, was yeah. gonna happen. and that would have been hilarious, but you know, right. And so, I mean, but yeah, some interesting moves being played there, but let, let, let's not uh, jump too far ahead when we, we still got a little bit more pre-tribal council stuff. Um, uh, because he talks about, they're not planning to vote out Nora. They're just they're, they're Everyone's agreed on Dean as far as they know. Um, they are, however, to Dean telling him that Nora is the target, right? She's the decoy for Dean. And in fact, probably Nora knew that, which would make her all the more vulnerable to Kelly's plan, right? Like if, if Nora knew, like if everyone's telling Nora, like, okay, don't worry, we're definitely going for Dean, but he thinks it's you. Like she might not like that, but it's got to be somebody. Yeah. So maybe if, if she knew that's what was happening, all the more reason that she would say like, well, if we pretty much know that he's voting for me, you know, although I think if you were able to do the calculated risk and think two or three steps ahead, like we learned in the Island of the Idols this time, you'd start to say, if he's playing an idol, um, you know, because he thinks he's going home, why would he choose Nora to be who he would send home with his one vote? Right, because she's an easier target later on mm-hmm. because everybody's got a little bit of an issue with her. Yeah. So. so in any event, uh, it, uh, so Dean is pretty well fooled, though, by everybody at this point. He says, like, he understands that theoretically he could be a target, but if that's the case, they're doing a good job of persuading him he's not. You know, yeah. they're making me feel pretty comfortable. Um, so I think that, um, let's see. Uh, this pr- That pretty much brings us to the tribal council, I think, right? So yeah. um, we have, uh, we begin with kind of uh, Nora just really doesn't mince words about choosing the majority group over Dean. But of course, I think, you know, we can understand from her perspective, she's feeling maybe a little bit insecure about it and is just trying to make really clear. It's like, no, I'm definitely with you. I'm definitely doing what we talked about. I'm not changing my plan in some way. I'm not going to vote for someone else as a surprise move for some reason. Even though, of course, we knew that's exactly what she was doing. Because (laughs) So, um, you know, that's kind of interesting. But at the same time, her whole plan, you know, even voting for Jack 
was not because she wanted Jack gone. It was only because, just in case, Dean pulls out something unexpected, right? Um, and the whole then the whole thing of Dean being able to immediately say, "Yeah, but Nora, you've been complaining about me, uh, complaining about Jamal to me for three days." And you definitely mentioned his name and her sort of attempt to justify that just because I hate him a little bit doesn't mean I want to vote for him. Right. Was, Indifference is worse than hate. Yeah. Because sometimes well, you hate and you love and then you hate. And it's like, what? I mean, I it's. Get what you're trying to get at. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, it is a saying, the idea that hate isn't the opposite of love. It's indifference. You know, like that, like that's a thing that people yes. say, but it doesn't apply perfectly there. And basically what she did with that whole speech is to have Jamal just kind of go like, okay, wow. Uh, now I'm concerned that you are actually trying to do something uh, untoward here. And the thing is, for all we know, he might've been right. Right. You know, it was just, it just came down to whether Kelly chose Jack or Jamal when we know she was considering both. So it might have been Jamal that, Nora was planning to vote for. Yeah. Um, but in any event, um, uh, I felt like completely out of context, I would say she answered that and, and defended that whole position pretty well, but there's kind of too much history and context for how she's behaved up till now to give it, give it weight. Um, there's some interesting brief discussion about the merits of an Alliance member who always says what she's thinking, right? Like, you know, it's like you, you feel like you can trust her a little better, except that you also can't count on her to t keep secrets from other people. Um, and then this is where we get to the girls Alliance trope. And, and I had slightly mixed feelings at the beginning of, of, uh, of all of this, because on the one hand, Kelly made a lot of really good points about like, when there's a group of men coming together with an Alliance, we don't talk about a men's Alliance. Like that's a, like a diff distinct thing. You know, it, it's like it's the default and it's only notable. We call it a girl's alliance when it's like special because that's an unusual thing. Right. You know, and there's there's some tropes and uh, and bias in, inherent in some of that. And I think she made a lot of good points. But where it was undercut just a little bit in this particular circumstance is that a. Tropey stereotype or not there is actually talk about a girl's alliance in this season, right? So like that's actually happening. The thing that he was current concerned about and expressing his concern about is actually happening to one degree or another. Right. It's being discussed. Yeah. Um, and also B she had a, uh, like a, an ulterior motive for wanting to shut down that whole line of conversation because she was planning to do her, surprise plan to save Dean. So she was not wanting anything to kind of complicate the narrative of what was going to happen. So all of this stuff about what we're suddenly talking about Jamal. No, 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 no. Everyone was going to vote for Dean. That's what we're talking about. No, we're not changing it to Nora. We're not, you know, so she's in a position of like her whole plan was predicated on this idea that everyone was agreed that we're going to vote for Dean. And so if now Jamal and Nora are fighting, are people going to change their votes to Nora? And what does that do to her plan? So I felt like her coming in on that conversation was partly based on trying to shut down that conversation, but then she kind of got sidetracked into her actual strong feelings on the subject. And it was just sort of a bumpy takeoff for that discussion. Yeah. Um, but there was, uh, there's some good points though made in there. And I, and I, again, I, I do like the, the, the motif this season of having, healthy discourse about, you know, uh, complicated topics. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I realized that kind of after I said stuff at the beginning that that was really all I had to say about it. And, mm -hmm. you know, you <laughs> weighed in on the other side of it and that's kind of where it is. Well, yeah. I, and I mean, I'm definitely, yeah. So I, I don't know. I mean, I think we, 
you know, we, we kind of filled in the context, right? You know, there was the outlines, but now we've kind of discovered the basic context of it. So, um, there is some brief discussion after all of that though, of like, well, now that everybody in the conversation circle is, is feeling warm fuzzies about how we've learned and grown today, you still have to vote somebody out, <laughs> which I think is, it is one of the things that's interesting about the game of survivor is that as much as I do like all of these healthy behaviors of how to communicate with people and conflict resolution and how to get past some of these uh, rough edges that arise naturally when you have a diverse group of people in close quarters like this, right? Like I love all of that, but it's also interesting to see how that interfaces with a game that forces you to cast people out. Right. You know? But yeah, so um, I did absolutely love the moment though, where um, Dean plays the idol and then Nora goes, but why wouldn't he have played it last time? And Kelly's just like, I don't know. <laughs> I thought that was just a great moment. And it, yeah. I think illustrates what we sort of discovered talking through her plan is that the plausible deniability was key to it. Yeah. Um, she wants to be at the end and reveal her subtle plan only then, if, if possible, you know, and to have everyone confirm is like, oh yeah, I manipulated this whole thing and nobody even knew. Um, that would be a pretty killer, like, you know, what was your best move, you know, to say like, I manipulated the situation and nobody even knew I did it at the time, but now I can tell you. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that would be great. So. Yeah. Um, so obviously all of Dean's votes did not count. We discussed it. Two votes for Jack coming for, from Dean himself, of course, and Nora. Um, oh, and, and it kind of skipped over, but even though we talked about it already, but Jamal playing his own idol for Nora, which I, I screamed into a pillow when he did that, just because I, at, at least in the immediate moment, I had no idea what he was thinking. It's like, what, why are you doing that? <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, as, as we talked through it, like I, I buy the logic, even though I don't think I would have made the same decision. We kind of said that already. Yeah, correct. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in the meantime, though, it, it was nice. Nora apologizes to Jamal just in the sense that like, I'm, I'm sorry that it turns out that you didn't need to do that so that it's wasted now, but, um, so in any event, that uh, pretty much finishes it. Next week is going to be, you know, merge chaos. Everyone running around saying names to each other. Uh, including, as we saw, Dean saying Kelly's name. So what's going on there? We'll see. And, uh, and Jack, in his final words, is just a big old puppy dog. He does not know what just happened, but... He, he's not happy about it exactly, but he's a good kid. He's stoked to be on the jury, which is cool. Oh, yeah, he does get on the jury, doesn't he? Yeah, I didn't realize that until he said so in the final words. Right. Because I, if, if Provost said that, I I wasn't paying attention at the moment, but he did say that in his final words. So I'm stoked to be on the jury, which is cool, definitely. So... <laughs> is there a puppy dog uh in over there growling at something yeah there's people outside ah. doors and stuff and he's just making how sure that... dare they yeah they know you're they know you're here <laughs> <laughs> all right well so i think that probably covers it for this week of survivor island of the idols but uh we will be back Chill. next week to talk about episode eight. So in the meantime, try and survive till then. Hey. Hey. <laughs> All, right. Chill. All right. Uh, let's see if I can get to the right button. There we go. Good night, everybody. <laughs>